always remember that Jesus Christ, a descendant of King David, was raised from the dead. This is the good news I preach. You know, some people say that God is never late. Even so, doesn't he seem slow sometimes? I mean, why doesn't he answer your prayers to bring you someone to share your life with or some place to call home? The medical breakthrough that could bring you a new lease on life or the help you need when you've been biting off more than you can chew. When's he gonna show up with the answer you need or the money you owe or to fix what's wrong in the church or to avenge the one who wronged you in your family? Where is he when your daughter's fighting cancer or you're fumbling your career? When you're at the end of your rope or the beginning of a terrifying storm? Sometimes God seems unbelievably silent. And this is especially true in the storms of our life, isn't it? Are you in some kind of a storm? I'm here to help you not to forget to remember. We tend to do that in times of downpour. In fact, the disciples did. John chapter 8 tells us that one day Jesus got into a boat with his followers and he said he wanted to go to the other side of the lake. Then he fell asleep. That's the moment a windstorm came down on them and it must have been a whopper because the boat began to take on water. And what started out as a merry version of row, row, row your boat turned into a theme song for Titanic. And Jesus slept right through it. Feel familiar? Those seasoned fishermen were shook. And you better believe they woke the weary teacher up. Jesus, we're dying. Don't you care? Well, he did care. And he told the wind and the raging waves so. Then he turned his attention back to the guys in the boat. He had something to say to them too. There in the calm of yet another miracle, he asks them this. Where is your faith? Not the most comforting thing to say to a few grown men who probably just lost their lunch about the time they lost their cool. But Jesus doesn't stroke their egos, not like you and I are prone to do. Instead, he cuts to the chase. He essentially asks, did you forget who I am? Did you forget who is with you? They had, in fact, forgotten who was with them. In spite of all the amazing things they'd been witness to, those men cowered when a storm brewed. Can you identify? I'm here to help you remember, not to forget. You know who had a hard time remembering God? The Israelites. Even though they'd been rescued by him over and over and over again. So those ancient believers did something to help them remember. They did something simple, cooking, and eating a meal to help them remember God. Like taking vitamins keeps the physical heart healthy, eating matzo bread and bitter herbs apparently kept their spiritual hearts beating. I'm talking about the Passover feast, sometimes called the Seder dinner. They feasted on foods that reminded them of God's deliverance out of Egypt. They killed a spotless lamb for that feast because that's what happened on the first Passover. And not coincidentally, they did it during the same time of year that Christians celebrate Easter, when the spotless Lamb of God would lay His life down to rescue you and to rescue me. Now, the main purpose of Passover was to remember God's rescue of the Israelites from Egyptian slavery and to point to the ultimate rescue of humanity through the blood of Jesus Christ, though they didn't know about that second part yet. But a really cool bonus purpose was to answer questions that children might have. The annual meal was an invitation for kids to ask dad, hey, what's that mean? Really, what's that mean? The parents were remembering, the kids were learning. Here's the thing, the parents could not teach the children about their faith in God unless they remembered, and you, my friend, cannot teach your daughter to live by faith if you're in a state of spiritual amnesia. Is your faith alive, vibrant, spirit-fueled, or is it dead, weak, 
the victim of crossing off a religious to-do list just to say you did. You know, I once heard that to remember is to put back what is dismembered. Much as you would reattach a limb if it were tragically lost, every season of spiritual amnesia requires us to remember what's been missing in our minds and our souls. We're invited to put our faith back where it belongs. And you know, I think traditions like Passover feast, Easter gatherings, the Christmas candlelight services, these are opportunities for us to actively remember, to put back what's been missing in our minds and our souls. And here's a piece of advice that I hope you'll remember. Traditions are the glue that holds us to each other and to God if they point to Him. Now, right here in this kitchen, every year I make the world's best peanut butter Easter eggs, and I hope you have a favorite peanut butter Easter egg recipe. Mine have Rice Krispies in them. For an extra kick of wow, promise me that you'll try this year. Divide your recipe in half and put Rice Krispie squares in one half. You will never return to the creamy ones again, promise. But if the chocolate bunnies and Easter baskets have replaced traditions that help us remember Jesus, well, then we're in danger of not having passion, but amnesia concerning our faith. I encourage you to pass on Christ-centered traditions and a Bible-saturated legacy to your daughter. So many of the simple and ordinary things we do during celebrations, holidays, and special mom-daughter dates can develop and deepen your love for our dear Jesus and your daughters too. And this month, I wanna invite you to do something simple and ordinary to remember Jesus. 2 Timothy 2.8 urges, always remember that Jesus Christ, a descendant of King David, was raised from the dead. Now, honestly, such a simple verse, uh, how could we forget so precious a deliverance? But we do, don't we? Can I invite you to put back what's been dismembered from your heart and your soul, Mom? If you can't remember your faith, she can't learn hers. So let me coach you up. If you're feeling a bit like those disciples in John chapter 8, the ones who had a fearful case of spiritual amnesia, well, when Jesus stilled the wind and the raging waters that day on the lake for those fearful fishermen, He used it to invite them to remember what they'd lost for a moment. Luke records that the Savior asked them, where is your faith? He didn't ask them, don't you have any faith? He knew they had it. I imagined him asking them this in the same tone he might have asked them, well, where are your raincoats? Don't you think they could have been helpful in this situation? This was just the prompting they needed to remember. They turned to one another and said, who is this? Even the winds and the waters obey him. And their question is not answered in the biblical narrative, but one is implied. They knew God is with us. Whatever wind and water you're facing in your storm, I promise you this, God is with you, even if you've forgotten to remember.